I don't know. I'm really sure what happened. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that that's a problem. Hello and welcome to the Barker Lounger Limited. This is one of your two co-hosts speaking, Ashley Bernhardt. I am joined by Nicole and Nania. Uh, and this week we are covering episodes five through eight, the f- last I guess they're the last four episodes of Pieces of Her out on Netflix, starring Tony Collette. Um, I, every time I want to call the show Pieces of Me instead of Pieces of Her, and I want to start singing the Ashley Simpson song and just, <laughs> all the pieces, pieces, <laughs> pieces of me. <laughs> that, was that was my a- prim impression. <laughs> It was beautiful. Yeah, I really wore out my Ashley Simpson CD. Uh. <laughs> oh, you owned it. All right. I I, I own it. Ryan Cabrera though. Like they were a couple. They were a force to be reckoned with. So I wore that with, out with his giant flat ironed hair. So oh, yeah. yeah, we're both we're both ashamed. We both have shame CDs. <laughs> uh, but yes, so uh, we're gonna talk about the end of pieces of her and where you can find us if you're just tuning in and you're just hearing us for the first time you can find us over at twitter at barka lounger pod and you can also find us on instagram at the barka lounger podcast and go check out our other episodes we're also covering winning time the rise of the lakers on hbo max right now uh, and we're loving that um but not to spoil anything about pieces of her we're not, we did not love it as much. Um, <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> Spoiler. Uh, what to say about pieces of her? Um, I don't think it was off to a strong start. If you listen to our part one of this, the episodes um, two through four, and even our episode one that we did, we were never really thrilled, but we were hoping that something would come about to keep us hooked um and for me personally especially after the episode four mark i'm not hooked anymore i'm not in it i'm i might be completely zoned out uh i tried really hard to focus on this show and i think it did a really bad job (laughs) Um, that or the show did a really bad job or it could be half and half um it might have been half ashley was not using all of her brain power to uh see what was going on and the show was kind of convoluted by the end um didn't make a whole lot of sense (laughs) (laughs) nicole i guess we'll just go for it like did you feel the same way? Did you understand what was going on? Um, I just feel like we get we we were like in Inception, the movie at one point where we were in a flashback within a flashback, uh, and then jumping back to the present. Um, it did not work. Um, it was it was not confusing. I wasn't confused. I just it's like a big no no and like <laughs> it, besides like Inception, like that's the point of the film, right? That's the concept. But outside of that concept, if you're not doing some kind of flashback within a flashback or memory within a memory sort of thing, it's like a big no-no in writing and in storytelling. It's like what you're taught is, or at least what I was taught is like, no, no, that's confusing as all fuck. Do not go (laughs) go a flashback within a flashback. Uh, So I didn't particularly appreciate that. Uh, But I don't. Are you feeling on the same page here, or you got it more than I did, or? <laughs> and no, How yeah, like, no. I also was very, like, the show was bizarre. Like, it it reached a level of like, it wasn't just that it was a bad show. It was that there were constantly choices being made, especially as it drew to a close. Where I was like, what is going on? <laughs> I was like, what kind of show is this? Or like, do they know what they're trying to tell me? Like. Even if sometimes I wasn't confused and I understood what they were saying, it was such a weird way to tell me. It mm. was like so many different hoops and like lenses. Like you're talking about flashbacks within flashbacks. And I'm like, there's such an easier way for you to tell me this and give me this information. Or like, 
There was also a lot of just spending time on things that I did not care about at all. And there's a lot of stuff that I did care about that we never got to see. And that's why this was so frustrating for me because I'm like really deeply buried. There is a show in here. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, far down. That is how I feel. Um, but go ahead. Like what, what part did you think that there was a show underneath it all that if you took out like some of the the non-needed stuff i mean i think we're on the same page here i i could say what i think um what the show really should have been but it was not uh but i want to hear what what you think is the real story that should have been told (laughs) okay like for me the actual story that i'm interested in is jane's story jane slash laura's story like i even the flashbacks, like, I, I know some people weren't, like, a fan of, like, I saw a lot of people being like, I just hate these, like, back to the 80s, like, flashbacks or whatever. I didn't mind them. I really feel like I would have loved to have watched, like, that full story of, like, Jane's development of, like, being abused and used by men and then, like, having to, like, bury who she really is and, like, do this fake, like, nice lady thing and, you know, raise her daughter and, like... We got flashes of that, you know, like we have things like that scene where she's sitting by the other cancer patient's bed who's like going to pass away and she's crying and she gives like a great speech about like dying in someone else's skin and like all these things. And I'm like, oh, this is great. That's I exactly love the scene yeah. that I was going to mention. I I yes. wrote down in my notes, I said, okay, so this is why Tony Collette took the part. <laughs> It like, must we have see been. glimpses of it in the last two episodes of of great material to work with. Yeah, no, she really like I mean even if it wasn't in this like Tony Collette tapped into it. Like Tony Collette was like, okay, <laughs> like I understand this woman and like she gave us real emotion. And so that's also why I was like so legitimately kind of like angry while I was watching the final episodes because I'm like, you give me something like that. Which is good. And it also makes me think that you sort of do know what the real story is. But you just refuse to give it to me. And, like, (laughs) there's a lot of, you know, just whatever. There's whole characters that I don't feel like are necessary. That I really think stuff that could be paired away very easily. And you could shorten the number of episodes. And just have a very nice, like, a tight drama about this character. About Jane Queller. Uh, and who I find like really intriguing and this idea of being won over by this guy and like also obviously we'll get to it like the twist um, (laughs) which like really makes you think like she's different than what you thought that she was and it makes for like a really interesting character in terms of like things that she's willing to do and like how she's viewed by society and maybe by her daughter and like you never really know her like I find that kind of fascinating Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have seen like development of like her relationships with her family like with her two different brothers and her villain father like Terry O'Quinn is also really great but there's not a lot for him to do and I I don't know I just feel like or her like her relationships with the women in her wife life like the housekeeper like Clara who raises her daughter like there were just so many (laughs) different things going on in her life that I found really fascinating and we never get any of it. Or if we do, it is so bland. <laughs> it is so basic. It is so lifetime. <laughs> We're yeah. going to talk about it. Yeah. That it was like, I don't know. I, I just feel like they squandered what actually could have been a good story. So like, that's the story I was interested in. Yeah. I mean, the flashbacks are terrible. Let's just face it. Like they're really bad acting. Um, they're, yeah. really poorly shot um I, <laughs> like i don't there's nothing going on there that's interesting visually or dialogue or like there's just nothing interesting going on but meanwhile you have like um an internal like terrorist go organization that she's a part of like what are you talking about like how is this how is this flashback boring when you have um what, what are those called i you know, like what? What are do- domestic? There we go. I got it. Domestic terrorists. Like you have domestic kind of terrorism going on. You have this cult thing going on, or this radical group going on um, with Nick Harper. How is this boring? <laughs> uh, I don't. 
Excuse me, I just yeah. like choked because of how like hard I wanted to laugh after that. I just don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. And Nick Harp, I'm sorry, whatever actor they got to play him has, has the charm and charisma of wall paint and like a very eggshell white. Like, that's not even, that's not even fair because like eggshell white paint is more interesting than what this Nick Harper actor gave us. Wait, no, okay. Maybe you mean both. Do you mean young Nick or old Nick? Both. But yes, but, it's be- okay. but especially the young one. Um, because he is supposed to seduce Miss Young Jane who yeah. is, you know, well, she's a terrible one. She, that's another one. That's not- <laughs> The whole flashback show... I, it's like they spent all their money on the main cast, <laughs> and then they were like, yep. "Shit, like some somebody go hire some lifetime people to deliver these lines." Um. <laughs> well, I just side note that like Jessica Barden, who plays Young Jane, I've seen her in other. I saw her in like The End of the Fucking World, which is like a Netflix show, and she was good at that, right? So I think that she really must have been directed to be as monotone and have no emotion as possible, because like. I've seen her in other things, but yeah, like I, okay, whatever. We'll we'll get into it. But yeah, like, she literally has no. There's nothing going on with Young Jane. There's nothing behind those eyes. No, I, it almost seems like she's dead inside. Like she's a very confusing character, in all honesty. Because what we get of her younger and in flashbacks, and then what we get of Tony Collette. At least like Tony Collette has some emotions, <laughs> and um. Yeah. Jane, yeah, Jane does not, Laura does, uh, which is kind of funny considering Laura's the fake. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. I don't know how, like, this guy is supposed to be radicalizing other people. Nick Harper is radicalizing other people. And honestly, that char- that char you need somebody who's charming at the very least. You know, like generally those kinds of like people, when people start following them, generally those sorts are are charismatic and charming and endearing. And that's how they convince people to follow them. Um, This Nick character is just fucking angry. And that's about all. He's just that's it. He's just angry about her rich father. (laughs) Um, And so I just I don't see the appeal. I don't know how young Jane would get seduced into this. No, I don't either. I mean, there were kind of when we first meet him at that like horribly written like family dinner. That too, oh, so where I'm like, bad. okay, this is just like very like generic. Like you just typed in like rich mean people dinner. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> that's like what it was. But anyway, I feel like when you first meet him and then he's sitting with her at the piano, like there was something there. Like at the very beginning, I'm like, okay, like he seems kind of charming. I can understand he's like different from her family. It's like kind of appealing to her. But yeah, then as it goes forward, there's no charm there. There's no seduction. There's no like, I don't believe that you've grown up your whole life this way and you never go against your father. And now all of a sudden, you're not only going to go against him, you're going to join a terrorist group. Uh, (laughs) And then, well, I guess then murder him. And then, yeah, (laughs) and then plot to kill him. Like, I don't, and then plot to get, unless like, this is also what I'm, I just, I, I don't like when shows. Go ahead, uh, finish, go finish sorry. your thought. Well, like, you know, we're, when we're going to get to the twist, but I don't like when shows withhold information until very last minute because it completely changes everything about how you view the characters and then the show is over. And so I feel like I'm like, okay, maybe she's. It's not supposed to be such a seduction because really she's doing her own things and she like isn't that drawn into Nick Harpet. She just sees him as a way out. So she's really calculating. But like that's not what we experience the entire show. Yeah, we just get that at the end, I guess. Like if that is the rationale that we get from yeah. Tony Collette of I cause she does give that speech to her her daughter, or that monologue to her daughter about this is this was my way out. Or I don't know yeah. who she gives it to. I think it's I think I think it's Andy. <laughs> Um, that's another non-existent character that's on the screen at all times Uh, I don't I don't know the the young 80s flashbacks are just bad they're just really bad and I and I think part of it is because they waited so long to to show the flashbacks like we should have been getting this the whole time 
Like it should have been from the start. I really think it should be from episode one on. I just don't know what. I guess they wanted this. I guess maybe the. I don't know. I haven't read the novel, but I'm assuming the novel is a mystery. So they wanted to make this a mystery, and I just don't know if this show is really a mystery. <laughs> no, I. I don't think it is, and like me at least, I. I'm not interested in that. And I guess episode to episode, like maybe some people were watching it trying to figure out like what really happened in the past? Like, who is Jane Queller? I wasn't watching it for that. Like, I'm not into, like, a million red herrings and, like, you wasting my time. Like, I really am interested in, like, I guess that character story of Jane Queller, of, like, the Tony Collette character. Well, yeah, how does somebody Laura. get... you? How is some, it's a much more interesting story. How does somebody get radicalized and in too deep, um, fall in yeah, love with somebody, that's, that's get pregnant, and now <laughs> to the point of she's going to kill her father? Uh, that's a more yeah. interesting story without the mystery. Like, take the mystery out of it, and maybe like keep the thriller part of Nick Harper still being out and and about and after her now. After how many years later? Like, you could still have your thriller part. You just you don't have to make the entire thing a mystery. <laughs> you don't have to have the whole thing be mystery, and also. Like, the show is never going to... The show can't do this because, obviously, the show is based on this book where, like, the mother-daughter relationship and, like, the daughter finding this out is, like, a big element of the story. But I don't think you need Andy at all. I I don't (laughs) think you need her at all. Like, I think that you could just have this woman who's in witness protection and her past catches up to her. Like, she's there at the restaurant and the same thing happens. Like, whatever. Or, mm. you know, it could be her and and the ex-husband. And they're doing it together and he's finding out more about her. You know, like, whatever it is. If you're going to make me... You're going to say, like, oh, the mother-daughter relationship makes this original and different. And we want you to care about that. Then it has to be really good. Yeah. Like, it has to be... And it's not really good. And any time we were with Andy... It was a waste of time. She's not a character herself, so I don't care about her. I don't care about her and Michael. I especially <laughs> don't care about her and the witness protection man. <laughs> Marshall, no, I'm like watching over the her. Marshall. Do your job. Like do your job, Michael. <laughs> like that also. Where I'm like, okay, classic. He's supposed to be done with this job, but he's gonna throw it all away. <laughs> <to> go <laughs> go help Andy. Yeah, because he's because he's in love with her. I'm sure at this point. Because there's so much has happened between because them. we've <laughs> seen, we've seen that because we've Which, seen no, that. I'm being so sarcastic as in no we did not see anything between them <laughs> besides you saved my life okay there is a supposed love scene but it's not a love scene we're just under the assumption yeah. that they slept together we're not really even sure I mean listen he's he's gonna literally be like I I'm gonna just go after her like I'm hoping he slept with her at the very least <laughs> to like. <laughs> <laughs> to be taking the actions like he literally gets like dosed and like almost murdered, you know. So, I, yeah, I, I would like, hope he got some. <laughs> so, so bad. That sounds awful. That's I'm so sorry. That's not. We apologize. We don't. Uh, we don't endorse that. You don't have to sleep with people in order to earn their love. <laughs> no, you don't. Um, but Andy is like negative zero of a character. <laughs> so, like, she's also. Also, I feel like a lot of the show, and I found this interesting, but I don't think they wanted me to take it this way. It seemed to me that Jane hated her daughter, was constantly annoyed by her daughter. <laughs> like, literally, like, we have a whole flashback, like, didn't even seem like she wanted to go pick her up from class. <laughs> oh, God. I know it was so bad. She goes to her in the treehouse, and she's just like, come on. Come on, you little shit. <laughs> like, she might as like, she stopped short of, like, being come here come here little asshole like that's how she like started short of like calling her a name um and I'm like what yeah. the, what is the deal with this like is it i mean sure if like those are her feelings about the daughter because she didn't want her and it reminds her of a bad time in her life and like that bad unhealthy relationship and that abusive relationship and controlling relationship with nick i get it but we need to see that <laughs> Like, we don't, we, we can't yeah. just see it at the very end where he smacks her and chokes her or whatever. And, like, we need to see, like, him being abusive and controlling consistently. And, like, 
Yeah, he was a little bit when he was angry after the father argument outside the house thing. I don't know what even was going on there. Like he gets in that argument with the father, then he goes outside and yells at her. And it's like, okay, we see it a little bit. But ah, these things should be strung throughout the season. You have eight episodes and it's episode, what, seven when we finally freaking meet Nick Harper for an extended period of time? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, literally. I actually think it's the finale. Like, I think episode seven ends with, like, him crashing into their car. And then the finale. Oh, there's no flashbacks of, of him. Of older Nick Harp? Oh, no, we don't. Yeah, we don't get older Nick. We just get the younger one. The younger one, yeah. Which, by I the mean, way. <laughs> sorry, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I did not have anything to say. <laughs> by the way. I... <laughs> What? How do you recast somebody? Like, not recast. Like, how do you cast an older Nick who's literally, like, five years older than the young one? Like, no, I didn't, like, look up the ages to see how old young Nick is and how uh, old old Nick is or older Nick is. But for me personally, like, those two actors look fairly similar in age. Like, I don't know. Young Nick looks like he's about 45 to me. <laughs> So the thing is, like, I don't think he's that old, but yeah, I guess he just looks that old. He's got like the, like Charles Manson thing going on, I guess. Like, but yeah, it is very distracting when we see old Nick because, especially yeah, if you think about the difference between young Jane and then like older <laughs> Jane <Yeah>. slash, <laughs> yeah, it's not enough of a difference. No, and like I get it that young Nick is much older than Jane. Or at least I was. Yep. I got that impression by the ca- the way they casted these two. <laughs> <laughs> and old Nick just looks like he's five years older than the young one. And on top of which, like, they look nothing alike. I don't know if you can cast somebody who already looks like an adult and then just cast another adult looking person. Like, I, I you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like they need to cast at least somebody who was 65 <laughs> or 60. <laughs> Yeah, I get because, you know, yes, like Jessica Barden, like playing Jane, like she looks like she literally could be a teenager. She looks so, like she's 19 yeah. or 20 would be my guess playing her, if not yeah. younger. And I think she actually probably is supposed to be that age because isn't her brother in college with Nick Harper? And that's how that's the whole connection. Yeah. So I don't even know how old she is supposed to be. I mean, we probably find that out like earlier on, but like that feels like such a long time ago to me now. Like (laughs) when I finished the show, I was like, there was a part of me that was like, okay, if this was a better show, I would go back and rewatch certain things. Like now knowing what I do, Um, there's no way I will be going back and watching any of the show again. (laughs) But (laughs) there's like a lot of information because of the way that things are paced and we keep going back and forth with the flashbacks in present day and the full eight episodes. I feel like there's so many things that happened before that I didn't understand that they could have cleared up that I'm like, okay, I feel like this information we don't get into like the finale. Now I understand what was going on or now I see that in a different way, <laughs> mm-hmm. but it was so long ago that like, I don't care about it anymore. <laughs> I don't remember. I like, are yeah. you in- I just, we get to the finale and and okay so to tie up the nick thing he makes no like his character sucks like and not in like he's supposed to suck like the characters just doesn't make sense in terms of this radical who's you know militarizing people and the nick we get at the end like why is he still after her well, i don't get it <laughs> like what is this revenge thing he's got with against Jane and the kid and then we find out that like he's been seeing Andy when she was not with Jane this whole time when she was younger when Jane was a baby what were we supposed to take from that too because because uh Andy has no memory of any of this and it's just like flashbacks to her when she's back in the house that she was raised in until four years yeah that it triggers memory I mean It's also not like anything traumatic happened. Like even just that small detail, I'm like, you remember things from when you're four. You don't remember this whole woman that raised you. Like, I, like, I why remember. would you repress that? Like, yeah, exactly. Like, what traumatic thing happened that made Andy repress this? 
Yeah, I mean, the whole show, we're getting these flashbacks of her... In the cold, in the, sh- in the snow. <laughs> you think something terrible happened yeah. to her. Like, she was and left for just- hours or days. Yeah. But yeah, like, you think that she... I thought for sure that, like, Nick Harp came and they had to hide and Clara yeah. put her in there. No, she was just in the... I don't know if the flashback was specifically from when she goes in there when, you know, Jane comes to get her and she doesn't want to leave, like... That but again, that's like not, where it's from. Yeah, and it's just, like... I guess that's traumatic. Like, your mom's here. <laughs> like, you gotta... <laughs> and, but you gotta it's go weird, though. Her. Like, I get a child being shy towards somebody she hasn't met, but, like... She still kisses mommy and the picture of her every morning. Like, they have her. They talk about her. So, like, I get, like, the initial... I, a kid would be shy initially meeting their mom yeah. for the first time. But at the same time, I know toddlers. If you show them pictures of people and you tell them about these people, they know, like, and they show up and you're like, oh, that's blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, like, they don't... <laughs> they don't yeah. freak out about it like i get like maybe she didn't want to leave with her because she's used to her home like i can see that scenario happening um yeah but the total like i'm not gonna i don't know i'm not gonna be okay with this at all i, I don't know that whole thing was weird though too because jane just seems like a terrible person like if you're picking up your daughter you might want to be a little gentle with her (laughs) like maybe stay for a few hours maybe transition this a little better i I, yeah it was like you were saying like she just like hates her daughter and she's like like, i gotta take you so this is the deal and come on yeah i mean like and it's it's confusing the whole show because i never know what is true maybe that's how they want me to feel what's the truth but like as a viewer just fucking tell me like just tell me at this point like about this character because it's like okay she did literally all of this and you're expecting me that she to believe that she had her father murdered to protect her daughter cuz she wants this baby so badly yes then yeah she's got the baby and she realizes like you know she says at one point like i did think about leaving her with clara because she's a more natural mother like i'm not a natural mother and i'm okay i love that I love yeah. stories about not being a natural mother, right? But like, but then this whole show, she loves Andy so much. And she's like she trying can't to protect lose Andy, her, you yeah. Know? And yet, she's every time we see an interaction with her, she just fucking hates her. Like every single interaction, there's no soft yeah. moments between them. There's not, and she's you know she's always like, why don't you go like get a life? Like why don't you leave me alone? Like why don't you go do something? Or like I told you to fucking do something. Why didn't you do it? Like again? Like she's always so annoyed and i i guess we're supposed to take that as her being like yeah like go live your life like don't be like me like you can go have a life but that's never properly conveyed to us i never get from it like oh this is coming from a place of love it genuinely seems like she hates her she wishes she was not around she wishes she had not had her you know like that's what i get and again that's like a whole other story but i really think that they want you to feel that she loves her she sacrificed everything for her and, like, this is the most important thing in the world to her. I don't get that at all. <laughs> um, no. No, but circling back, I think we were talking about Nick Harp. And, like, he wants to kill her, I guess. I also think that it's, like, one, I guess you're supposed to you're believe, like, okay, like, this is, like, a little bit of a twist, right? Like, new information. The mm-hmm. tape. Right? Okay, so he wants this tape so he could use it to blackmail Jasper, and maybe he can get a deal. And then also, I guess he hates her because she made everybody think that he had her dad murdered and he actually did not do that like she did (laughs) you know so i guess he's also mad about that because she still gets to look like the good person and he's like the awful cult leader and like whatever you picked up on a lot of things that i didn't even know like i i don't know my brain did not process any of this stuff that they were trying to tell me the whole thing with jasper i was like what the hell is going on with him What's the deal with him? I don't understand this character. I don't get it. I did not get the brother at all. No, I, like, if there's one thing that I'm like, I am confused. I am uncertain. (laughs) It's about Jasper because they want you to think she hears the tape. So Jasper knew the dad was going to be murdered and he wanted this because he's going to take over the company, right? Uh And then she uses it to blackmail Jasper. Like, don't you dare say anything bad about Andrew in this cult because I'll tell everybody that you were in on it and then you'll, you know, you'll go away to prison. But then no, 
But then actually, I think when they show the scene of him in the car with Nick, I think that Jasper really believes that they're going to do the die plan, like with the money and the fake blood, which was the original plan. Because Nick says, like, oh, he'll have to resign after this. Not like he'll be fucking dead. You know, <laughs> like, he'll have to resign. So really, <sighs> he wasn't part of the murder thing. Then we find out that actually Jane had the dad murdered, right? And now Jasper finds this out after all this time of being blackmailed for something he did not do. He's like, you actually did it, and now I'm going to blackmail you. You. I... Oh, sorry, you froze and then sped up. <laughs> you froze too. <laughs> okay, so what you said, what was your last words? I think that that's what they want us to believe, like that he didn't know about it, he just wanted the company, and then Jane actually did it, he found out, and now he's blackmailing her. Like, I really don't think that Jasper knew that his dad was going to be murdered. That's my understanding. Well, you, did, you understand a lot better than I understood, because you said a bunch of... <laughs> You said a bunch of things that I just went way over my head or I didn't catch. Um, again, this is partly because I was so tuned out. I will be honest. I was not paying attention anymore by the time those details were revealed where there was a, yet another twist. It was like, no, I was going to say like, it was I was way too you. late in the game. <laughs> No, because, like, you really, those last two episodes, you have to not be looking away at all. Because, like, a, a scene like that with the two of them in the car, where it kind of clarifies what Jasper thought was going to happen, is very quick. And if I was not, like, really listening, I would not have understood what I think that they were trying to put forward. Like, they cram a lot of essential information into those final scenes, or they want you to understand something that happened at the beginning that we haven't seen again. So it's just very confusing. I uh, I was confused. I uh, I didn't get it. I didn't grasp it. I, I you know what? I wasn't gonna try. <laughs> like that's how much I did not. By the end, I was just I did not care about the show. I was like I I'm confused. This seems convoluted. I think I was supposed to get some more information. But I don't know what it is, and I don't care. I don't care to rewind and go back and see what I missed. <laughs> And that's very odd yeah. for me to do. I'm the type of person that if I'm really invested in something, I will go back and be like, what What word did they use? What did they say? And I'll go back 10 seconds, go back five seconds and put on the subtitles and figure it out. And I, I had no desire to do that with this show. <laughs> I, I just uh, knew the yeah, conclusion no. was going to be so unsatisfying. And we, I mean, we called it. We said there's going to be multiple twists and a bunch of them are going to be completely unnecessary. <laughs> and we were, we were right. It was exactly, yeah, it was exactly the type of show that we thought, I guess it was going to be, no, it was worse. It was worse than I thought, but it was the type of show I thought it was going to be. After the first episode, I don't yeah, know. I, it definitely was worse than I thought it was going to be. But I honestly think that that has to do with the lack of any good acting. <laughs> I mean, that's so I yeah. can't say that because Tony Collette acted her ass off, and even um, who plays was his name Charlie. Oh yeah, you know, like he acted his ass off, and Gil Birmingham, yeah. I'd say that the, those two especially, like, they, I don't know, they survived the show, um, is how I can put it. I. Everybody else did a terrible job, I was gonna say it, I don't care, I, I'm just gonna say it, like, those flashbacks were awful, the whole young cast just sucks. <laughs> and, and like this is in part due to the writing obviously and and the and the directing and all that stuff like it's not just on acting because you know, even if you had better actors this is still really bad material to work with but it really uh, declined into a lifetime show like this it is what you would see if you put on a lifetime movie it like I it fully leaned into it, I guess the whole time. But I would I really felt like okay oh this is what I'm watching when they get nailed by the car, 
there's a shot of Andy spinning around that is so ridiculous. Like, her scared face spinning around. And then that episode ends with, who are you? Nick Harp. Your father. Like, literally, <laughs> Nick Harp, your father. I hear in my head, like, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And then we have... In the finale, this is legitimately a scene I've watched in at least 50 Lifetime movies of I'm the bad guy, I've got you finally, and, like, your child or your spouse or whatever, and now I'm going to, like, make you confess or we're going to, like, reveal a secret. Like, classic, classic Lifetime, right? And I read that that in the book, this is classic Lifetime, they didn't do this, that uh, Jane is wearing, like, a wire to like record his confession like the entire time um and that's how she like gets him to be in prison forever or whatever it is obviously in the show we have her straight up trying to murder him uh which i was a fan of i thought that was yeah. i'm like oh okay because jane literally is fine with with murdering him to keep this secret right now but again i know nothing about this character that murders her dad that just straight up murders people <laughs> like i don't know anything about this jane because i really have not gotten to see it um but yeah, it's it's very lifetime at the end. It's very cheesy and just ridiculous. I don't blame you for checking out and not necessarily paying attention because it's not worth it at that point. And I fully was like, I will I'm done with this show. Like the disrespect to Charlie, the way that they acknowledge that Charlie has died. Like you just said like Gil Birmingham, aside from Tony Collette, is the only I'm like, okay. And I like that relationship between those mm-hmm. two characters. He's been with her. For so long. She literally left witness protection. He goes back into this to help her. He dies. And the acknowledgement we get is Andy at the hospital being like, I can't believe he's gone. And I was like, who? Yeah. <laughs> like, Charlie's, it, it's Charlie's such dead? a small blip. Yeah, I know. I, I Even going into the next episode, I was like, I forgot that he was dead just because it was so not acknowledged. <laughs> it wasn't. Yeah, no, because they get hit by the car and like, yeah, I don't I don't know. I thought maybe he was like tied up in the house somewhere because but again, she doesn't care at all. And Nick's story is that he was what, walking in the area or driving by and he heard her screaming after she got in a car accident? She doesn't question this at all. I don't know if she's going along with it because she's scared of him. We don't know because there's no acting happening. So I don't know how Andy's supposed to be feeling. I'm assuming she's believing this and she's just like, "Oh yeah, Charlie's at the hospital." And I'm like, Charlie's not at the hospital, but still, I didn't think he was dead. And then in the finale, to get that acknowledgement, and no one talks about it again, this is an important person to Jane. There's no, like, there's no reaction. There's no emotion from it. They just keep moving forward because they have to get to the twist. You know, so, like, (laughs) we have to get to this twist. (laughs) That is so useless to me, too, because I'm like, all right, I guess... So we didn't really know Jane, and Andy didn't really know Jane, and now she fully knows her mother, and she accepts her. She's not going to tell anybody that she straight up murdered her dad. They're going to stand together on the beach, and they love each other. I guess, like, (laughs) that's the ending of the show. (laughs) I also, like, and it's so bad. But you know what? The show deserves this criticism because they are making a show. They end on a note of mother and daughter. But at no point are the mother and daughter together for seven episodes. <laughs> like, we don't yeah. know their relationship. And whenever we get conversations with them, it is the most generic dialogue I've ever heard spoken. And it's always like, well, fuck you, Andy. Can you get a life? <laughs> Can you get a life? <laughs> and like, Andy's just like, yeah. Mom, I don't know why you're so mean to me. <laughs> like in that like doe eyed, like doesn't know what the fuck is going on non person way. She feels like an AI. Like I wouldn't be surprised if the doest is Andy is not an AI robot. Like I don't <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised either because it does get to a level of like there's nothing ha- her and young Jane. It's almost like, (laughs) well, no, because I feel like Andy, I'll say that Andy has like one emotion, no, two emotions, which is like confused, like really confused. And like, what am I doing? What's going on? And being a bitch to her mom. Like those are like the two, (laughs) the two moods that we get or like being a bitch to Michael or then making out with Michael. Like, again, even seeing her with other characters, there's not going on. And then young Jane literally has nothing. She's very dead inside. She has no emotion. (laughs) 
anyway. <laughs> but like <sighs> that scene, uh, I, you you saying that too about their conversations. Like one of the very few times again, like they're finally reunited and they're at the diner. <laughs> And it's just them talking about what we just saw. It's Andy being very mean. Like, I didn't know anything about you, and I can't believe you did this. And then being like, oh, I found out this. And then I went here, and I found out that. And then I found out this. And I'm like, <laughs> sorry, <"Wait>, Kath. <laughs> if you fell yeah, asleep sorry. the last few episodes. <laughs> Maybe oh, they were worried about God. that. And, and then, then, like, and then just, straight up, Laura just leaves her. Jane just fucking leaves her again. <laughs> That, like, the way that Andy realizes and goes to the bed. (laughs) But she's like, she did not fucking leave me again. And then she, like, runs out after her so desperate. (laughs) It was so comical. I was so I'm, like, cracking up watching this scene. (laughs) Now she runs out. She's like, where are you going? (laughs) And then also just, like, the smallest zooms details. off on the car. She just books it. <laughs> she really does like rip out of that. <laughs> like she... Don't follow and me. He... Stay here. Yeah, don't follow me. Stay here. What? Wait for Charlie. Oh my god. How how the fuck was Andy supposed to know Charlie was coming? They never. That's said, they never. Crazy thing. He's like, what is? What do you mean? How was Andy supposed to know to wait for Charlie? Oh my she stomach didn't. hurts from no. this. Oh my god. And then also another tiny thing that I'm like, it was like two things on top of each other. I'm like, I really can't handle this show right now. And when Charlie comes, Andy is like sitting outside of the diner. Like people are trying to kill you. We're assuming like whatever. You're sitting in the parking lot, right? And then I'm like, okay, well, maybe, you know, the restaurant closed. They zoom out, and it says, like, 24-hour diner in, like, giant lettering. <laughs> I'm like, like, why are you not inside the 24-hour diner? Because, again, like, she does decision. stupid shit. She is so dumb. She's really, really dumb. And, like, it doesn't endear her at all to the the audience like from everything i've seen even people who like the show i don't know how but fine okay like if you (laughs) like the show they still are like okay but she's really dumb like she's really acting like a 16 year old um you know or somebody yeah she the age is just so dumbfounding in all honesty like at least make her college age at the very least I i don't yeah instead of 30 years old it's very not believable and then also just in terms of like their relationship up to that point i, I don't know i feel like a 30 year old woman has a very different relationship with, with their mother. mother yeah that i mean but yeah. i guess that they're wor- but they're harping on everything is harping on we don't know jane we don't know laura laura is not a real person so andy doesn't know i'm like i don't buy that i don't buy that you're with your daughter for 30 years and you not one thing about yourself that you've exposed to your daughter is real like i don't buy that like witness protection fine but that's changing your identity it's not changing your personality like but she has no personality so i guess how would there's nothing for annie to find out she's like i don't know you all annie finds out is she plays piano like that's the only thing we know about jane she likes piano yeah she likes piano. Well, that's the thing, too. Like, there's not, to me... I don't understand what the difference is supposed to be between Jane Queller and Queller and Laura. I don't even know what their last name is. Whatever Laura is supposed to be, right? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know the difference between the two of them because I think you're expecting me to think that Jane is this, like... Ma- it's actually manipulative, I guess, like, ambitious like a tamped down woman like i don't know if we're supposed to be thinking that underneath of all of that like no emotion and like she's playing the good girl thing that you know she's got something in her this like vibrancy i, I don't even know what i'm trying to say because i don't know what it's supposed to be because like they're making it with tony collette the way that she talks about the difference between the two of them and like dying in somebody else's skin she's making it seem like okay, I have to be Laura, and she's nice, and she's a speech pathologist, and she's a mom, and she's very boring, and I wish I could be Jane, you know? Yeah. But I'm like, but okay, but we, we don't see Jane. Like, if, if they showed us young Jane, and it was like this stark difference in personality, 
you know, like this fireball of a woman. Like, maybe I would get it then. But like, no, she no. seems very, she seems very muted. And then she makes these like very extreme choices. We don't understand the motivations at all. She feels very disconnected from like the things that she's doing. And like, there's even a part, I guess then Tony Collette, like, I just want to call her Tony because like the Jane Laura thing is very confusing. But like, at one point she tells Andy, like, sometimes I was so angry, like all the time. And I know you could feel that anger. And Andy's like, I thought you were mad at me. And I guess she means, like, she was mad at the situation. She was mad at Nick Harp. Like, she was mad at her dad. So then I'm like, okay, do you mean, like, all these times you're so mean to Andy and we think you hate Andy? It's because you're so mad about your past? Like, are you telling me you have an anger issue? Like, <laughs> there's so many things. <sighs> Why did it make still makes that? sense. Ugh. Oh, and then we learn that to to understand why she when she got the knife stabbed through her hand and she slit the guy's throat Nick Hart did the same thing and that's what we were supposed to that's where she got that move from yeah that's still that's silly to me it's it's silly also because I think they really are trying to lead you to believe that she has some kind of training that I was assuming that she got through the cult you know like through the yeah. the terrorist group and we do have random, really weird flashes of like him blindfolding a gun her together. And, yeah, I like, yeah, putting a gun together. And I guess no, there's nothing that happens with a knife. I mean, obviously, we know the hand thing is because she like broke her hand on purpose, which isn't like an interesting choice. Another thing that maybe if it was coming through another acting performance would have meant something to me. I'm like, oh wow, you like legitimately just tried to kind of like ruin. Your piano yeah, career, your piano let's create career that to, over. To get out yeah. of it. It's an interesting choice. It's it's never really explored, but anyway, like, <laughs> we get those weird scenes. So there's just a lot of times where the show clearly was trying to, like, a red, yes, herring. Like, they were trying to make you think one thing, and then it was actually something else. Because, like, when we get that knife reveal, there's no way that I thought she was just copying what she saw him do. I guess it was a very traumatic moment in her life, and we're supposed to believe that is it muscle memory? Like, she sees another, yeah, muscle, like, act of violence? Like, what? But muscle... Yeah, I know. But, like, muscle memory is the act of your muscles doing something over and over again. Yeah. So that's why I don't buy that. <laughs> but is that what they want us to think, though? I think you so. You know? Like yeah, I think so. I, they want us to think a lot of things. They want us to not question anything. They just want to be like, well, we left enough breadcrumbs for you. To buy, like you have to buy this, you know, because we're like, oh well, there's this that Jane did, and there's this that Jane did, and like they're expecting those little tiny crumbs <laughs> to equal what we get at the end, and it just doesn't. No, it doesn't add up to anything, and like we're wasting so much time with Andy too. Like we waste so much time yeah. with Andy. Like the first three to four episodes, four episodes, first four episodes, we waste so much time with Andy. And we're learning nothing about Jane slash Laura. No, we spend a lot of time with Andy. And it's really just her messing up constantly, like trying to find stuff about her mom that like we we don't need her to find out this stuff about Jane slash Laura. Like, I don't need that level of separation. You know, I don't need to wait so long through flashbacks to like get this information that would make me see Jane in a different light and maybe be like really interested in her. Yeah. Um, I would find myself like, you know, like, okay, when are we going to get back to Tony? Like, when are we going to get back to Tony? <laughs> like, can you please just go back to that? Um, or even a flashback. I would take a flashback <laughs> over Andy because at least then I felt We're like I was information. learning things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also just <clears throat> very lazy certain things of like, the housekeeper has a tape that's going to kind of, you know, introduce you to the fact that she was in a romantic relationship with Nick Harp. Like, I just happen to have this tape that they taped and it's kept in the house to show that they were sleeping together. Or like Andy is walking through the mansion and she overhears the security guys listening to her conversation. Why is the door open? Why is the secret <laughs> security situation like right there? On her floor, I guess. Like, yeah. there's a lot of stuff that if it was a better show, I would overlook. But there's so many things like that 
that are so lazy or i guess they just thought that nobody would care it's a believability Um, thing like what i was saying the last um episode we did on this is just like there's just a lack of believability and i think i even said about episode one especially like i even (laughs) but the thing is like good shows don't have a believability issue (laughs) you know like i wouldn't be able to overlook these things even if the show was good because then that makes the show bad to me. <laughs> like, everything should be believable. Yeah. It should be. I mean, you know, I'm willing to suspend disbelief for certain things. But this was just, like, logically, there were so many things that happened. There's so many like, reveals that are just an information that's done through a Google search or internet search or a newspaper headline or video or these this old video footage. Again, Andy is supposed to be the fold, I think, to information. But when you're working in a television medium, you don't need a fold like that. So instead, what you should be doing is telling us thoroughly Jane's story and building the relationship between Andy and her mother so that we actually feel that she loves her daughter and was doing anything she can to protect her and not to get to the point that we're at. I, whatever I, I'm done <laughs> it was all done poorly uh, I, don't, I don't know it makes no sense like it makes sense with everything they told us but what we saw doesn't make sense <laughs> no it wasn't like it was not a complete story at all there were so many choices that were made that I don't understand <laughs> That nobody at any point was like, guys, like, what is this? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, this is not a cohesive project. You know, like, there's just so much that's going on that's completely unnecessary. But you know what? Tony was still great in it, uh, but not worth it. I would usually never say that, but not, not even worth it for Tony. Because, I mean, if... I was about to say if we spent more time with Tony, then maybe I'd say that. But like, then it would be a better show. It would be the show that we wanted, you know. So like, yeah, we didn't get that. Um, but I, Tony, you know what? Like, good for you. Like, get to cash your check. You got to be the best person in the show. You know, like everybody watches the show, and I'm sure a lot of people would be like, "Well, Tony was great as always." Um, but otherwise, yeah, like there's just there's a lot of stuff going on that doesn't work. Um. Aside from Tony, like, yeah, there's not really anything that I would say, well, I enjoyed that, you know. I guess I enjoyed the glimmers of the Jane Quiller story. Like, what could have been? Um, But I can't say that I enjoyed it because it was just a source of (laughs) frustration when you have potential for something. Yeah. Uh, And it seems like like nobody is helping it at all. (laughs) Like, nobody's doing anything to to pull that out. Uh, But, you know, what? we watched it. We got through it. I had a really tough time getting myself to finish it, if I'm honest. Like, without doing the podcast on it, the show would have been dropped at episode three. (laughs) I had such a difficult time sitting down to watch episode six. Like, episode five, I just was like, where's a window so I can throw myself out <laughs> before I have to watch episode six. Um, so yeah, that's dramatic, but that's kind of how I felt. Like I was just like, I don't want to watch the show anymore. I don't care what happens to anybody. Everybody can fuck no. right off. Yeah, no, I mean by then I didn't even I didn't care about Jane anymore. Like Tony was still doing a great job, but I'm like I don't care. I don't care about you. And then just you know. Just a little side note, like, also, like, our whole view of that character. I'm like, okay, you you wanted your dad dead. So you, you put a gun in the hands of a mentally unstable woman. She's lost her entire family. Her three children have been murdered. And you're giving her a gun to shoot your dad? And then, obviously, she ends up shooting herself. Like, who could have seen that coming? But I'm like, 
okay, okay, you know, like this is the person I was supposed to care about for eight episodes. <laughs> like I feel like they also just yeah kind of ruined that character. It's not even like they're rounding her out and they're like, oh, she's like a little bit more, you know, like villainous and manipulating than you thought that she was. Like straight up, I'm just like, okay, this is not the person that I thought that it was. Like this is not the character. Um, and I think the ending to was reading from the right like they were trying to leave it a little bit open-ended to have the potential for a season two i don't think this would get a season two um god not that we would be all. watching god help us all <laughs> what does society come to <laughs> if we get a season two of this no if we get a, a season two a hard no for me. Her, yeah something's wrong like something's going wrong with the totally. funding <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i just- uh, well, listen, worse, I guess worse things have been made at season two of, but like, move, move the fuck on from this show, please. Please. I, we don't need another train wreck, right? We don't need Big Little Lies season two. <laughs> Which, like, in comparison, oh. I'd take Big Little Lies season two. I'd take a shittier Big Little Lies season three. I'll take all the Big Little Lies you can give me. <laughs> Over season two of this show. Yeah, no, there's no comparison. This is going to be like my new TV standard, I think. Like, this will be like my... Is it as bad as (laughs) pieces of her? Yeah, I mean, listen, I... I don't think anybody involved in the show is listening, but like, this is our opinion, and I don't mean to be very rude about it, but... Yeah, like, this will be right now, like, I will be comparing it to, like, pieces of her, because for me, the quality really is that, is lacking that much um, from the first episode. I'll say that, too. The best episode was the first episode. (laughs) And I felt like, yeah, like, watching the first episode, I was like, okay, like, maybe we won't love this, but, like, this could be something. And no, with every passing episode, it just... It got further and further away from me. Yeah. I have no final thoughts on it. (laughs) Silence. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry, pieces of her. Um, That's all. We're sorry. We're sorry. Um, Anything else you want to say about it? Or uh, just uh, don't beat a dead horse. Uh, Yeah, I think we... uh, I think we did it i think people understand how we feel about it i don't really have anything else to say <laughs> okay well if you um want to listen to us talk about a show that we do love we do love television and we talk highly of many shows uh so listen to winning our reviews on winning time the rise of the lakers that show i love it yeah, it's definitely up there. Um, and it has yet to disappoint going into episode five. So if you miss winning time, don't really know what it's about, go to our first episode on winning time, The Rise of the Lakers. And we have a really great review there with some basketball expert. Uh, that's fun to listen to. So go check that out. Um, we're not going to shy away. We used to shy away from cruddy shows. I feel like we used to be afraid to badmouth shows. Yeah. And I think that it's okay to sometimes not have a great show and talk about it not being great. Like, it's okay. Uh, criticism, as long as it's fair, I think is fine. Yeah, as long as it doesn't feel like you're just shitting on something to shit on something. Um, you know, we can have a good dialogue about it. I think it's fun to kind of pick apart why it's not working. And I think you've said this before. It makes you appreciate when you do watch a really great show to watch something not so great. Yeah, you don't. It really does give you an appreciation for the better things uh, in life. Yeah. You can't know what's good until you watch what's bad. Yeah. <laughs> um, you have to watch both. Uh, and I almost I've been watching such good things for the past few years and I've refused to watch any any cruddier stuff which pieces of her i mean how do you go wrong with tony collette but it happens sometimes um 
I don't know, maybe I won't drop shows so quickly. Uh, maybe I'll try and see, see if there's any value there. Um, I'll still stop after episode three. Don't get me wrong. But I, I, it, I mean, if anything, Pieces of Her has given me so much appreciation for winning time every Sunday night. <laughs> um, so, yeah. yeah, go watch Winning Time. And hopefully you at least enjoyed and commiserated with us on this Pieces of Her uh, uh, review. So thank you for listening. Go check out our more upbeat uh, endings to, to reviews. <laughs> there are plenty of them. We really loved Pam and Tommy, and we are thoroughly enjoying winning time. So go check those out. And we will see you next week. Uh, we haven't decided what we're going to talk about after pieces of her that isn't winning time. Um, but I think we've had like, we're like a well earned take a break for a few weeks um, on the second show and just focus on winning time. So I'm going to leave it there. But so check out winning time next week if you're following along with us. Thank you for listening. Be good to one another. Have a great week. Goodbye. Bye.